Welcome to George Call Fine Art. Here, the viewer is encouraged to get outside and paint from life. George's job is to provide the tools to solve the many technical challenges faced in rendering landscape paintings. View the library of landscape paintings offered and become a subscriber. You can also purchase tutorial videos, plus original tutorial and studio paintings. Thank you, and if you like what you see, click the subscribe button and join in on the fun. Hello and welcome to part three of Timber Brook. I'm George Cole, and we finished this thing today. Hi-yi-yi-yi. Wow, that thing really turned out well. I was a little concerned when I started it. It looked pretty difficult, but um, you know, I started working in these shadows today and working with small brushes to bring out, you know, accents. And uh, I'm really pleased with the way it came out. Thank you. All right, so get outside and paint. Paint with your friends, get critiques, and don't be intimidated by a white canvas. Keep painting, that's the secret. All right, bye-bye. Hey, good morning, and welcome to part three of Timber Brook. This is Rocky Mountain National Park. And um, what I did off camera was try to blue these down, these shadows here in the, of the timber. I don't know if that's working or not, but uh, it's a good start. And um, I know the important thing is uh, when I stepped in here and saw this this morning, I need more light coming through the trees. In other words, I need good light. So I'll be using some permanent green, or if you don't have that, some emerald. And you'll be coming up in here and getting these lights established up in the canopies. Particularly, you know, all around the place. Now, if I don't have time to do that today, in this next 30 minutes, then I'm going to assign you to do it. Okay. Such a task master. Okay. Let's get to limbs. That's the big deal here. So we need some good dark. So I mean, ultra blue, some burnt sienna, transparent oxide red, something like that. And let me carry some darks through here. Just want some darks on my few logs here. All right, so you need a good dark. So I'm going to go something blue. I had some slop pile left over from yesterday. I'm putting some brown in there. Burnt sienna. Let's get some red in there. Some green. Anyway, it is dark. Nasty. So I think we have a good, a good dark here. All right. The next thing I need is just some really, really good light stuff. So I'm going to use some gray or some ice blue. Just need a little bit of gray in here, just a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit of Naples. Just a little bit. And I need something in between, so I'm going to get some of this dark and some of this light, and I have something in between. Dark, dark, medium, medium, light, light. So if you have a rigger or something thin, the edge of a really sharp, sharp um, brush, uh, that's what you can use today. I'm going over to my inventory of brushes looking for a good rigger. I need a good rigger. Don't know if this is it, but I'll try it. Okay, so I've got a number two uh, rigger, 279. So what I'm going to do here is first with the dark, this was all flared out, so I'm gooping it up. These soft brushes flare out, but once you goop them up, 
um, when I'm down, it will go back into a nice sharp shape. And as you can see, either it's going to work or it's not. Oh, it's flaring out, darn it. Okay, plan B. Let me try one more time. Get some darks in here. Okay, now you're sticking together. Let's see what happens. So I need to work the side of the brush, the end of the brush. But right now I'm using the side of the brush. And I'm going to be doing that all over the place. Now I'm going to go to the medium color. And I'll be doing the same thing. And then what I want to do is get some lights where the darks are. So now I'm going to go to the light mixture here. And do the same thing. I'm going to go right to the edge of these little dark branches I have. And get a light on it. Alright, so you get the idea there of what to do. Now I'll be doing that all over the place and do a few more examples here. Just need some darks here and here and here. You can see there's branches everywhere. You just need to be patient and do your thing. Branches everywhere. And then come back with your medium. It's a little dry. There we go. So my rigger's holding together now. And now I'm going in with the lights. And I'm just flipping the brush for my second stroke. Reloading. Probably when you're over here in the dark side and you're running brushes, probably want some light ones coming off of here so they can be seen through the dense forest here. Right, so you get the picture. Alright, so I think the other thing I need is to get some lights in here. This is too dark. I got a critique from my artist friends yesterday. Yesterday was a painting day with artist friends and uh, get critiques. So I think I can use this lighter color here and I'm going to get something like emerald or permanent green. I'm going to get some yellow ochre in here and some light 
green. I need something with more chroma. So I'm going to go into my permanent green. It's got a lot of chroma in it. And another one is uh, Viridian is a good one. And so is Emerald. And there's some good bright pigment. pigment. I still think yellow ochre is needed for anything to do with pine trees. You can also put a little olive in there. That's a good one for... Let me see if I have a... If this is bright enough. It looks a little dull. And I'm going to have time. 20 minutes. No, we're doing good. If we have extra time, we're going back into the brushes here. Well, that's pretty good. Okay, so you're getting the idea of what's happening here. You see already this is kind of putting the happy face on that using Bob Ross's terms. Happy. Happy, happy. Really looking at now the, the reference see if in fact I'm doing it justice because I chose this reference because it just has so many good parts to it and now let's go in with a olive and a little bit of permanent green olive permanent green And a little bit of blue. A little bit of blue. And I want to go in and work these darks a little bit with this kind of olivey green. Because it's just so beautiful. just adds more texture to this sea of green that we have so much of here. And now I need some really good dark stuff, so I'll go to brown. And this mixture right in here, there's some really good darks. And I need some really good blue now down here. And I need some light coming through there, so I will put some light in here and here. Now, did I do that right? Okay. Need more darks in here. This is that blue green. Less olive, more, more blue. And it really comes down here. I need some, some good squeaky green in here. So I'm going to try some straight out of the tube green, um, which was permanent green. Now when I really look at these uh, tree trunks, what I do see 
is that they really need to have a little bit of a yellow ochre look to them. So I'm going to mix some yellow ochre in here into that green pile I had and I'm going to give it a try. Because they're just kind of not doing too much in here. I think I need a little bit more light in there. So I'm going next door to this lighter green color. And we're going to see how that works. That is working pretty good. I'm twisting my brush as I bring it down because that brings more product off the the brush. Oh, these are nice. Reload. And I think as I come forward, I'll add a little bit more ultra blue, a little bit more cobalt, and I'm going to do a little more subtle dark in here. And that might do it. I'll get a little bit of straight yellow ochre here. And maybe say light reflection on one side. Oh, that worked nicely. Thank you. up with some of that lighter mixture of yellow ochre, a yellow ochre, and light yet again in here. I think I got a little bit too much light right here. I'm just softening it. All right, so let's get back. And get back into, I think I need some darks to break up some of these strong greens I ran through here. And it never hurts to have a little rust here and there. See what I got in the way of rust. Add a little light to this. Here we go. This is the color I'm looking for. And let's add some in a few places. to enhance the painting. This um, stuff really has some punch. It's got an opaque quality about it. As soon as it comes out, it really can make a statement. Let me see what I can do here. And I put some of this uh, cobalt into the shadow uh, off camera, so let me show you what I did. I better clean that brush and get that rust out of there if I'm going to show you anything. So let's just get some cobalt. and put some of the logs in shade. With this. Add a little purple to it. Cobalt, cobalt. And this has a nice effect. I think I went a little overboard up here. So I think I'm going to go back with some, some light into here. And then shadow. Just to show 
what I can do there. I think I'm doing ultra cobalt. There's just some really good dark stuff in here too. That's a little too much. Let me knock it down with some some olive on top of it. But you can see all those rich dark colors in there that really enhance the painting. This looks like a big splock right here. So I'm going to get some light green on it. And I'll run the shadow back into this area. And between the trees. And I think this is kind of a focal area up in the top here. So I'm going to add some cad yellow light into the green mixture. And I'm going to make more white into this. And I'm going to make a nice light color here. And carry it around in a few places to add light. And I'm going to get some sky holes in here, or background holes. And I'll do the same over in here. And I'm going to put a big bright right in here. And some other supporting guys over in here. guys that are back here, these trees, they're a, they're a little bit more, they've got more light coming through them. They're scrawnier in other words. So let me get some scrawny looks to these pine trees and do more background stuff. I think I overdid that light right there, so let me go back with a blue green. The olive, olive, ultra blue, olive. Let me knock this guy out a little bit. And I'll cover up some of these so they're not so distinct. And Just looking at the different shadows here, I have one going up and I've got a big dark right here. Dark. Dark. And too much of an angle here, so let me get some light underneath it. Like that. Blue. So, you know, what I do in this detail stage with a small brush, I'm trying to accent trunks or uh, branches or things like that. And of course, I don't have enough branches yet, and I'll do that off camera. But all in all, this is uh, really coming along with some good effect. I think I have some lighter water right down here that just is really, really light, so 
I'm going to just get some very light gray in here. Just a tad of cad yellow light. And I'm going to put that in right in here. And I see some other places of light, so I'm going to put that also in the appropriate places. Okay. And if you have too many branches, just go back to a yellow ochre Naples mixture and whack them out of there. And go back and work them again. I want to get some darker yellow ochre in the foreground, which would be right in here and here. I don't know, I see it in the reference, so that's why I'm doing it. And I see it in some other places. And then I see a kind of an interesting green. So I'm going to get some emerald and a lot of white. Well, that one's contaminated. Okay, get a little emerald and a lot of white. And get some of that in. And it just adds more texture to the, I think I need a little bit more green in here. And it just is a nice, just kind of borders up on these other guys up in here. To give it a nice look. Well, I've been enjoying this process. This is nice. And if you just might need a light blue coming through here. I just see it in the reference, so I'm just, I don't know what it is, but it's something. Maybe it's a broken limb. What else can I do? I think I can add some rust to my emerald uh, mixture. I better check the time. Oh, it's not looking good. But I'm going to add a little um, emerald and rust together and get some of that color you see in trees. Rocky Mountains, that is kind of the, oh, it's just kind of a thin wash, so I'm just thin, thin, thin. And you can see it just does a good job of bringing everything together and softening all these hard greens, but still saying green. And okay, let me see if that's working, okay? But I think I have to bring this to an end. I really enjoyed this. This, I was kind of scared of this reference. Man, it looked tough, but uh, you know, it came out really good. So, with that, I'm going to bring Timber Brook to an end. Thank you so much for hanging in there for these three sessions. All right. Enjoy your painting and uh, get outside and paint.